Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Invisible Kingdom's Army of Fire. Beloved family, our text says, And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray with blindness, and he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. 2 Kings 6, 15-18 The Bible is not a book about religion. If you listen to any way you slice it, you probably heard me said this statement before. It's because I am an ambassador of King Jesus Christ with an assignment to proclaim the kingdom of heaven the first country that ever existed. Only this kingdom is an invisible one that can only be seen by faith, but with an experience that you can definitely feel. Our opening text today will prove this truth by the words that Paul told the Corinthians. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.17 All governments of the world assemble an army to protect the country and its citizens from foreigners and other nations. But when you join the army, you are still a citizen, but with the duties of the military that supersedes your role as a citizen. What do I mean? Well, the military act like an authority. They have their own rules, laws, courts, separate and apart from the government that they serve. The government distinguishes the army from its citizens. In fact, the army refers to the citizens of its country as civilians. A civilian is a person not in the armed forces. The army's responsibility is to protect the civilians. The army fights for the civilians. Citizens do not fight in a war. They are not trained to go to war. Remember when Moses led the Israelite civilians out of Egypt? God said, these people are not equipped to fight, so I can't let them go past the Philistine army. Look at Exodus 13, 17. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. A government has special forces and armed forces that fight to defend the country as directed by the leaders of the armed forces. In the United States, the president is also the commander-in-chief who commands the generals of the armed forces. King Jesus Christ, our Lord, is eminently a man of war, as he is the king. He is the commander-in-chief of the angel armies. The Lord, he is God. And I will praise him and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Genesis 15, 2-3 Listen, why am I distinguishing the civilians from the army? Because when the army is at war, the citizens don't go to war. They stay at home. In the kingdom of God, it is no different. 
The angel armies fight to defend the kingdom and its citizens. You ought to be shouting right now. I have news for you, family. Those of us who put our faith in King Jesus Christ are citizens of the kingdom of God. We are not in the army of God. We fight in a different way. Our fight is the good fight of faith. Paul tells Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. 1 Timothy 6.12 So we are not fighting a physical battle against the army. And Elisha's encounter demonstrates the power of this invisible kingdom angel army. When the Syrian army surrounded them, Elijah prayed and said, God, let him see the invisible kingdom's army. And his eyes were open and he saw a mountain full of horses and chariots of fire. We fight the good fight of faith. When we put on the full armor, it is one that equips us to fight for our faith. Okay, let me give you some scripture truth for those who still believe God need us to fight against Satan. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. He was quoting Zechariah 3, 2. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Family, I want you to know this. You will have to face the enemy, but you won't have to fight them. Trials and tests will come to your life, but you face them by submitting to God. As James just said, we submit by seeking first the kingdom, believing, trusting, and obeying the king. And when trouble comes, praying and petitioning the king to fight on our behalf. Oh, I pray that you receive this word today. Stop worrying about fighting Satan, the enemy, and focus on serving and believing God. Focus on obeying his law and his word, doing his will and fulfilling the purpose and assignment he called you to. Elisha knew that his servant needed not to be fearful, but to be encouraged because God dispatched his angel kingdom army to fight for the citizens of the kingdom of God. But the citizens fight in prayer. We pray and petition the king to dispatch the angel army. And the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Psalms 34, 7. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. You fight to fight the good fight of faith, to keep your faith in God. Much love.